thank you all of you for attending. The topic today, and I've actually already broken the cardinal rule of presentations by putting an acronym in my um, title without first saying what it means, but I'm guessing that those of you attending know what it means. Is, uh, bring your own device and the implications for IT. So what I'm going to talk about today is just some pretty top-level stuff, but I started to notice that um, I started to notice. Sorry. I um, started to notice uh, several years ago that I, my email inbox was flooded with um, acronyms such as BYOD, BYOT, things like that, BYOPC. And I thought to myself, well, this is kind of an interesting topic. I don't really understand what it's all about. So I started to look into it, and I thought that it might be something that's of interest to the IT community community in general or the software measurement community as well. With a little introduction, talk some about the costs and the benefits of bring your own device, and then delve into what some of the implications for the IT organizations are of uh, bringing their own tablets and cell phones to work and using them, connecting to the networks of the organization. Talk about some success stories and some very valid concerns associated with this um, this phenomena that seems to seem, it seems like it's actually going to happen. It seems I mean it is happening in a lot of places, but it seems like it's not going to be stopped because there are so many benefits. But there are definitely concerns as well. I'll talk a little bit about key success, keys to success and then wrap it up and open for questions. Um, so if you've been in the software industry, you know, you probably notice you get a lot of emails that are um, trying to sell you some sort of advice or services or um, software solutions around this notion of bring your own device. And the notion literally is to be able to bring their tablet or their PC or their personal laptop or their personal phone and use that integrated into the company's network so that they are only dealing with one device and not having to lug around many devices. Um, it, it suggests, okay, so there are absolutely compelling reasons. This movement has been entirely initiated by employees because they're tired of lugging around their mobile devices. And if we think about how work and personal life tend to get more and more commingled, there's instances where one may very well need both devices. So if one can use their personal device to do their personal business as well as to do company business, that is attractive to employees. Employees are asking for this capability. But, of course, the employers um, have issues with that because um, they're allowing corporate ac or they're allowing access to corporate resources and Organizations need to be worried about the personal data, the public data, and that intermingling with the personal device. So, a recent survey found 74% of employers are allowing or plan to allow employees to use their personal mobile devices to some degree for business purposes. And not surprisingly, smaller organizations with not as many restrictions, with not as much complex infrastructure, excuse me embrace this concept in larger ones. And lots of organizations may allow their employees some level of BYOD access. So maybe they can get their emails on their cell phones, but they can't have access to all of the corporate data through any personal device. Uh, the industry is most likely supporting the BYOD initiative now. Um, obviously, um, information technology and technology, these companies are, are the ones that are going to invest upfront in techno technological solutions, they're the ones whose employees are going to be, you know, the tech-savvy enough employees who are going to be able to work with IT to get their personal devices configured. And not surprisingly, education has the highest percent of adoption for this initiative, and that, I think, makes a lot of sense because if we think about the academic environment, and we think about the fact that, you know, from a, a student perspective, and the students are being granted access in, in the same way that employees would be, the students are being granted access to um, resources on the network of the company. So, you know, all students carry laptops to school, and all students need to get access to many of the um, 
many of the resources that are available on the on, through the network on their um, on the mainframe well, not mainframe the back end of the educational system. So it, the industry it's not surprising who's beginning this initiative, but it it is actually growing out into other industries as well. Um, comprehensive BYOD is being adopted more rapidly in high growth markets. So um, a survey that I'll talk a little bit more about later finds that 75% of the employees in Russia and Brazil bring their own technology to work, 44% in the U.S. and the U.K. Um, I imagine a lot of that is because in the high growth markets, it's much more likely for the employees to have um, advanced technology than for the employers. And as I mentioned earlier, this initiative is entirely being spurred by employee demand. Em employees it, attracting new employees to your company, this is a benefit if you say, yes, you can bring your own tablet and work on that. You can bring your own phone. Um, so what are some of the benefits? Well, from the employer's perspective, I'm f sorry, from the employee perspective, only one device to lug around and keep track of. Um, the ability to select a device that best meets their needs. So I have specific things that I want to be able to do with my cell phone or my tablet. If I have to go with a company-supplied cell phone or tablet, it's possible that I'm not going to be able to download all the apps that I want to download, and I'm not going to be able to do all the things that I want to do on my cell phone. The employees don't have to learn how to use multiple devices or how, do you, how applications differ from device to device when that is a fact. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, employees want it. They, it is a benefit to many employees to be able to do that, to bring their own technology. Employer benefits. Uh, there's potential cost reductions, reduced hardware costs, reduced data plan costs. That's a potential. It's some organizations implement BYOD in such a way that, <clears throat> excuse me, in such a way that you know that they voucher their employees to get hardware and and reimburse parts of their data plan. Some don't. Uh, it does increase. It has definitely shown an increase in productivity because the employee doesn't have to learn new applications and doesn't have to become familiar with different ways of doing things on different devices. It it enables um, user enhancements. So the the employee benefits from later technology because uh, the employer may have a plan and they, that plan may have been put in place two years ago and there's a regular three-year update of technology for employees where individuals may upgrade their technology much more quickly. Um, employees are happy, employers like that. And this increased ability to attract and retain employees, especially if you're trying to attract the younger crowd they are certainly in love with their mobile devices and take a lot of personal satisfaction in, have, in being able to do the things that they can do with their mobile devices, and this just offers them additional convenience in the workplace. So if you look at the chart here, and this is from a study done – it's listed on a further slide. I'm sorry. I rearranged my slides. But this shows – some of the, um, the impacts by, um, by country. So a study was done across six countries on the impacts of BYOD with respect to productivity. And you can see across the board things like improved efficiency, new ways of doing work, and additional availability were all productivity gains. The having your phone with you at all times means it's easier for customers and your employer to get in touch with you. 